Here's the too long didn't watch. The Raspberry Pi Pico is a new four US dollar microcontroller board with a custom new dual core 133 megahertz ARM Cortex M0 plus microprocessor, two megabytes of built-in flash memory, 26 GPIO pins, an assortment of SPI, I2C, UART, ADC, PWM, and PIO channels. It also has a few other party tricks like edge castellations that make it easier to solder the Pico to other boards. And if you have no clue what any of that means, don't worry, I only know about 2% of the world of microcontrollers myself. The Pico is powered by this new RP2040 chip that sits right in the middle, and it's a brand new Raspberry Pi built ARM processor. And the best thing about this processor is the insanely detailed datasheet available on the Pico website that steps through every single bit of the chip's architecture. If you want to skip ahead to just the Pi Pico review or any other part of this video, use the chapters in the description or the play bar. Now, let's dive right in. When I got the Pico in the mail, I asked Redshirt Jeff if he had any ideas for a project, but I had to nix that idea pretty quickly when he explained his idea for a remote control blowtorch. So I got to thinking, and I remembered that a few years ago I was concerned about how cold one of my kids' bedrooms got in the winter. Since small children have a higher risk of death from SIDS if the ambient room temperature is too low or too high, I was right to worry. The recommended ambient temperature for kids' rooms is between 68 and 72 degrees. Oh, and I'm guessing if you're not from the USA, you might be wondering why we're cooking our children. Don't worry, we're not. That's degrees Fahrenheit, our crazy Murica units. In the rest of the world, the safe range is 20 to 22.2 degrees Celsius. Anyways, back then I built a complicated set of Raspberry Pi temperature monitoring stations. I open sourced my code and I even blogged about it on opensource.com. Fast forward a few years later and, well, yet again. We had a baby. So I'm going to make sure my new baby girl stays a safe temperature using a Raspberry Pi Pico. But before I get into my little project, I'll give a quick rundown on the specs and why the Pico is a great value for $4. When I first saw the Pico, I thought immediately of the teensy LC that's almost identical in size and also has an ARM M0 processor, but it's three times slower with a single core and a lot less flash storage. The going rate for a teensy LC is $8, twice the Pico. There's also the ESP32, but a full package like the Pico offers costs $10 to $20, Obviously, wireless capabilities on the ESP32 aren't present on the Pico, so you have to discount that in the price, but it is a lot less money if you don't need Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Finally, there's also the Pro Micro, but it offers a different set of trade-offs and a way slower clock speed than the Pico, and it also costs $10 or more most places online. Anyways, here are the specs of the Raspberry Pi Pico. It has an RP2040 microcontroller with 2 megabytes of flash storage. The processor runs up to 133 megahertz and is based around a dual-core Cortex M0 Plus design. The processor also has 264 kilobytes of SRAM. The processor has two UART, two I2C, two SPI, and up to 16 PWM channels. The processor includes a timer with four alarms and a real-time counter, as well as dual programmable I.O. peripherals. It uses a micro USB port for power and data and for programming the flash. 40 pins are both through-hole and castellated for mounting flexibility. There are 26 3.3 volt GPIO pins, 23 of the GPIO pins are digital only, and three are ADC capable. It has a three pin ARM serial wire debug port. And finally, it can be powered via micro USB or a dedicated power supply or battery. The easiest way to get started with the Pico is to hold down the boot cell button on it while you plug it into a computer. It'll be mounted as a mass storage device, and it even includes a handy link right on the board to the Getting Started Guide. To program the Pico with MicroPython, you can use the Thani Python IDE that's already built into Raspberry Pi OS, or you can install it on any Mac, Windows, or Linux PC. Before you can run MicroPython code, though, you need to follow the instructions on the Pico Getting Started Guide to download a UF2 file that will install MicroPython on the Pico and reboot it. After that, the Pico will automatically run whatever's stored in main.py on the Pico's file system when it boots up. There's an entire book called Get Started with MicroPython on Raspberry Pi Pico available through the Pico website, and I highly recommend it. Now that we know a bit about the Pico itself and how to program it, I need to explain when I'd use a microcontroller instead of a full computer like a Raspberry Pi with its GPI opens. For me, the main reason is usually power consumption. I've done a lot of power testing for my Raspberry Pi projects. 
Typically, I measure power consumption in amps and watts, though there are a few Pi models like the Model A Plus and Zero that sip only a few hundred milliamps when running at 5 volts, which translates into 1 or 2 watts. Well, when we talk about microcontrollers like the RP2040 on the Pico, power efficiency is on a different planet. In sleep or dormant mode, the Pico consumes less than 2 milliamps or 6 milliwatts. That's 0 0.006 watts. And even when it's running full tilt doing graphics rendering, it uses less than 100 milliamps or 0.33 watts. So if you program it efficiently, you can run the Pico off a small rechargeable battery like this one for days or even weeks. The Pico datasheet even has a suggested diagram if you want to wire up your own battery charging circuit. You might still be wondering what you can do with a microcontroller. Well, the Pico is fast enough that it can actually output video through VGA or DVI. It can process audio, it can control relays for things like irrigation systems, and it can even assist in flying spaceships for TV shows. That's right, the Razor Crest model from The Mandalorian was controlled using a custom controller built with a Teensy USB board, which is very similar to the Pico, though it's a little bit faster. Check out how that worked in the tested video linked in the card up above. In that video, ILM engineers explained how they built the custom motion control rig for controlling the spaceship model. All right, so I have a Pi Pico, and I'm about 100 times less experienced than those ILM engineers. But I have a simple goal. Make it easy to tell if the room temperature is safe for baby. So how do I do it? Well, here's the idea I have going into this project. The final form might be a little bit different, but what I'm thinking is I'll have the Pi Pico, a temperature sensor, and three LEDs, red, green, and blue. I'll write some Python that does the following. It measures the temperature every five seconds. If the temperature is in the safe range, 20 to 22.2 degrees Celsius, turn off the red and blue LEDs and turn on the green LED. If the temperature is too high, which is more than 22.2 degrees Celsius, turn off the blue and green LEDs and turn on the red LED. And if the temperature is too low, less than 20 degrees Celsius, turn off the red and green LEDs and turn on the blue LED. And you're thinking, Jeff, that sounds like a really simple device. Why not try something a little harder? Oh, well, let me tell you something about designing hardware. Things never work the way you think, and the simpler the design, the fewer the surprises. And I only have a few spare hours when our new baby is sleeping and I'm not, so simpler equals more likely to actually make it in this video. So let's speed up time for a build montage. First up, I had to make sure I could get my own MicroPython code working, so I used my kid's Pi 400 and got the little built-in LED on GPIO pin 25 to turn on and off with code. After that, I got one LED wired up to GPIO pin 15 simply because that was the closest pin to where I put the LED on my breadboard. Once I could light up those two LEDs, I wired everything else up, including a little DS18B20 temperature sensor with a pull-up resistor for parasite power. Then I went to town coding. I started the script by flashing all the LEDs for one second, then I wrote a loop that would check the temperature every five seconds and set the correct LED corresponding to the current temperature. And in the end, I found that the early beta version of MicroPython I was using didn't have one wire support built in, so it was a little rough getting the DS18B20 sensor working. Luckily though, the Pico has a built-in temperature sensor inside the RP2040 chip. Now, it's not quite as accurate, but it seemed to be within plus or minus one degree Celsius of my other thermometers. So I finished the build, tested it, and generated this little fritzing breadboard diagram in case you want to replicate my program. Oh, and like everything else I do, I open sourced all my work, so you can run the same software if you want. So anyways, here it is, the first beta version of Jeff Geerling's Safe Baby Room Temperature Monitor. No patents pending. If I warm up the Pico to more than 22.2 degrees Celsius, the red LED comes on. And if I cool it down to less than 20 degrees Celsius, in this case using one of my kids' funky little ice packs, the blue LED comes on. It was dead simple to get this working, and with a little polish, I could install everything on a custom PCB pretty easily. And if I ever crack open the box to my new Ender 3D printer, maybe I could even print a snazzy case for it. Anyways, check out my first Pico project on GitHub, and maybe use it as inspiration to build something on your own. To wrap things up though, one of the things I don't like about the Pico's design is the lack of pin labels on the top of the device. They're all labeled nicely on the bottom, but only pins 1, 2, and 39 are labeled on the top. There's no way to see which pin is which when I have it plugged into a breadboard. It would be nice if the Pi Foundation could silkscreen labels on top somehow, 
maybe like the Teensy does it with little angled labels. Other than that, there's not much wrong with the Pico for its price. I mean, having two cores may be nice for some projects, but most of my own work wouldn't benefit from dealing with the complexity of multiple threads and software. But that's not really a bad thing. All in all, I think the Pi Foundation has a winner with their new $4 microcontroller, and I can't wait to see what other people come out with based on the RP2040 chip. I just hope the Pi Foundation can keep up with demand. It would be really sad if they're hard to find months after launch, like what's happened with the Compute Module 4. One other thing I want to see is a full getting started kit with lots of different components like you can find for the Arduino. I'm sure some companies will be putting these together, so I'll keep my eyes open. Anyways, thanks for watching, and until next time, I'm Jeff Gearling. To getting started, the, the, oh man, I didn't know SRAM made you burp. Micro Python, I, oh no, I might be a robot. Is that another gray hair? Before you can run MicroPython Kodo, the, no, Kodo. After that, the Pi, the Pi, uh, uh, mm. and it can even assist. Mm. This is like take 27. I'm not even joking. Like you can find for Ar Arduino, Arduino, Arduino.